Hi, my name is Greg Fishback. I'm the owner of the Defensive Arts Center, uh, where we do real-world, pragmatic, realistic uh, firearms training uh, for self-defense in the modern world. So, Greg, right now you've been working with me for about a month. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been doing some personal private classes. Just kind of tell everybody um, what you and I have been working on and how you see that as being a benefit to uh, security guards today. Excellent. So what we've done with you is a little bit different than we do with some of our other uh, um, civilian classes. Uh, primarily, we've taken the martial arts meets real world self-defense. Uh, a lot of martial arts philosophy when it comes to uh, movement, but more importantly, myelination, which is something I always talk about. Uh, with the, 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 we'll just call it muscle memory for now. It's, it's a very real thing. Sports has figured that out. Um, martial arts has figured that out. Unfortunately, the firearms community never really has. And so what we're doing with you is we're going back through uh, retention drills, retention techniques, uh, holster drawing techniques, and we're throwing curveballs at you. What, what if we're giving you, you know, because we work with, with inert weapons and non-live fire, now we can actually go hands-on. And you and I have done hand-to-hand -hand stuff. We do sticky hand drills where I'm literally trying to take um, the firearm right off of your side, right? So these are the things you just can't do safely with, with a live fire environment. So our environment's very realistic. We use the uh, laser pistols uh, for primarily because they're so tough, you can run them over with a truck. But we've also done some, some airsoft training with you. you. You seem to enjoy that quite a bit. We have not yet broken out the uh, simunitions and UTMs, but we're about to do that. Start working on those malfunction drills in a real fight, you know, when you have a malfunction. How do you, how do you run, move, clear a type three malfunction uh, and uh, be prepared to defend yourself? You know, one of the things that I find so interesting about the classes with you is that they're so applicable just to your everyday carry situation. Um, real quick before I let you go, what is your advice to people who are already at the point where they're, uh, they're carrying, uh, maybe they have their concealed carry license or they're thinking about getting it, but just giving them the importance of actually training in these real world scenarios? <laughs> I don't think you've got enough battery left for that, but uh, the short the short version of that is um, <sighs> training is absolutely critical. A real world training. Unfortunately, the the industry, the firearms industry, is around ego. It is it has been built around making people feel better about themselves. And we're going to give you some a couple of skills. You're going to be able to do those skills, um, and I'm going to collect collect your money. And, and honestly, it's it's it is because of the safety issue in live fire is. Uh, mo nobody can afford to have you train uh, safely, uh, you know, in, in a, a, a lethal environment. So um, go back and ask, ask that question again. <laughs> well, just basically getting people to understand the importance of, of training oh. in scenarios of things that yeah, so it's we put so much time and this is just my own personal opinion, but we put so much time and effort into picking out the right gun, picking out the right holster, and then we go and we shoot targets, but I have yet to really come across a lot of people who are thinking, especially when it's just your, your every average day Joe, who's thinking about gun retention or what happens if the, the gunfight quote unquote goes to the ground. Mm -hmm. Or if you, you know, today when we were doing the drills, I dropped the gun. You know, those are things that happen. Um, they don't always unfold like they would in a movie. A lot of times things happen. You know, today I slipped a piece of the the foam moved, but those are things that happen when you're in a, a life or death situation. And if people aren't training for that, um, I feel like they're really they're 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 being naive to how things are going to unfold right. if they've never actually been in a fight. Right. Well, I think you experienced it today too. I mean, that's a that's a big that's a big thing. And I mean, in a real gunfight, you've got adrenaline coursing through your body, but but it's not dissimilar to what happened in your case. What you got was a, was a great surprise. And you realized as soon as you were surprised that all of your channels, all of your thought uh, ability went to what just happened and you kind of forgot that, that we're doing gun training. Uh, this is absolutely common. Um, what we do is, is we try to make people understand. We give them the tools and knowledge, education, uh, and understanding of what it takes to truly develop muscle memory. In that situation, the only thing that's going to survive when you don't have the ability to think, which is very similar to um, a uh, defensive situation where you've got just adrenaline coursing through your system, uh, is that which you've committed to muscle memory. And the, the reality is in muscle memory, one single task, one task, takes 20 minutes a day for 12 straight weeks before it just starts to become 
uh, myelinated where it will happen without you thinking about it. Most people train to what we call, you start off as consciously incompetent, right? It's just everybody's there about something, minus brain surgery, right? Um, you decide you're gonna become, uh, uh, you know, nothing about guns originally. At some point in your life, you decide I wanna be good at guns. Now you are consciously incompetent. That means I now know what I don't know. So you train. Now you can do the job. Now you're consciously competent. That unfortunately is where most people stop. And the problem is when you're in a crisis situation, when you fall on the carpet, you don't have the ability to do if then thinking. So you have to go to the next step, which is unconsciously competent. Now you can move without thinking and your body knows what to do, even though your brain is somewhere else. Everybody's capable of that. You do it every day when you drive, right? If somebody tries to blow a stop sign, you check the rear view, you check the side view, you, and the, you didn't even realize your foot's on the brake, right? This is myelination, you, you've done this your life. You can do this with firearms. It just takes the right environment, the right instruction, and the, the dedication of time. Outstanding, all right, very good. Thank you very much. Very welcome.